Welcome to Sleepy Eyes. I am your host, Varga. I take you on a journey in the dark of the night with warm tales. Take a moment to relax your body and mind with the current calmness. Breathe deeply, feel the energy inside, and let go of any tiredness. Put aside the past and focus on the peacefulness of the present moment. Recognize any tension in your body. Allow it to fade away and unwind. Discover your inner peace and simply unwind in the tranquility of now. Before going to sleep, prepare to read a story comfortably in this peaceful setting. Let the magic of words captivate you as you get lost in a tale or story. With the warmth from this peace and relaxation, your sleep will become even more serene. Close your eyes, embark on a journey with a touch of words. Let each word guide you a bit deeper toward the essence of your inner peace. Now, relax and enjoy the pleasure of getting lost in the enchanting world of the story before drifting into sleep. Of Dust and Domes Chapter 2 A Risky Rescue The colonists gathered somberly in the dome's meeting hall. Shadows etched deeply on tired faces. Clara stood before them, her expression grave. Our crops have been destroyed, she said. At current consumption, our reserves will only last two months. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Jake stared at a crack in the floor, images of blackened stalks and shriveled leaves flickering behind his eyes. Failure meant death for all of them, stranded on an unforgiving world. There may be hope. Clara continued sternly. Reports from the last outpost shut down indicated seed vaults were still intact. If we can get there, we may find viable samples to restart our farms. Jake knew the outpost lay over a hundred kilometers to the northwest, across a landscape that had buried expeditions before. Still, something had to be tried. As others debated the risks, he stepped forward. I'll go. All eyes turned to him, some hopeful, others doubtful, but Jake had made up his mind, recalling his duty to the people who had become his family. The colony was counting on him. He couldn't give up now. Jake stood, breaking the tense silence that had fallen over the gathering. Murmurs rose again as all eyes turned towards him. I'll go, he said, meeting Clara's gaze steadily. A chorus of objections arose, but he barely heard them, flashes of memory filling his mind. He saw his grandfather atop a Martian dune, gesturing excitedly as the first greenhouse domes were erected, his father guiding his small hand over weather-worn maps, tracing the roots of early colonists with a rough finger. Voices echoed across the years. We came to tame a world, make a life where none could live before. Their legacy was his duty to uphold. Turning to face his people, Jake pushed down doubt stirring in his stomach. My family has lived on Mars for three generations. We've survived blizzards, quakes, and equipment failures to build this colony from dust. I won't let anything drive us off this planet without a fight. His words resonated with quiet strength, quelling protests in the grim faces around him. Jake saw the same determination that had sustained his forebears through harsh seasons without end. The outpost seeds would be found, he had to believe it, for all their sakes. Jake spent the next hours preparing the aged rover for departure under the watchful eye of mechanics. His mind wandered as weathered metal panels were sealed and joints passed inspection. This vehicle had borne his father on countless expeditions during Mars' first phases of terraforming. Jake recalled clinging to its windows as a boy, wide-eyed at wonders unfolding outside. Later, its dented frame shielded him from raging sandstorms on long surveying trips across uncharted regions. Now, a new generation looked to it once more. As the sun dipped towards the ruddy horizon, 
Colonists gathered to wish Jake well. Hands clasped his with fervor. Eyes glistened as he promised to return. Seeing so much hope weighted on his shoulders, set nerves jangling. What if he failed? If the rover broke down? Or worse, a storm trapped him beyond rescue. Shaking off doubts, Jake climbed inside and ran system checks by memory. Engines hummed to life despite years of neglect. Fueling his belief the mission could succeed where others had fallen. As hatches sealed and the hangar pressurized, Jake stared into the waiting crimson dark and steeled his resolve and luck for what lay ahead. Jake double-checked craters of oxygen. Water and rations were secured. His hand lingered on a photo of distant earth, a reminder of fragile life they fought to preserve. Clara appeared at the rover's hatch. Godspeed, she said. The colony is counting on you. But promise me you'll be careful out there. Your safety is crucial too. He nodded, embracing her briefly. I'll come back. I swear it. Just keep the home fires burning till then. With that, the hatch slid shut, enclosing him in a cocoon of artificial light and air. Jake exhaled slowly, running through pre-flight checks by rote to calm jittery nerves. Outside, twilight deepened to the hue of rust. It was time. Engaging controls, Jake steered the rover from its shelter into an impending Martian night. Crimson dunes rolled endlessly ahead, illuminated only by the baleful glow of Phobos and Deimos above. As the facility lights shrank into the distance, he pressed on into the isolation and uncertainties of the path lying before him. The rover surged over sweeping dunes as night deepened its grip, consulting battered navigational maps by dashboard light. Jake guided them northwest while dust devils spiraled hauntingly past. Endless vistas of ochre soil and iron-flecked stone stretched away into darkness on all sides. Jake felt acutely small and vulnerable traversing spaces never meant for humans. His presence here was solely by dint of machines, climate control, and tightly rationed supplies. One failure in any could spell a gruesome end far from helping hands. Doubt and nerves nagged as empty hours passed, the lone vehicle plowing on amid swirling granules. How could he hope to find anything in the vast indifference of the landscape? Each dune's crest revealed only more of the same barren wastes slipping endlessly by. Cold crept through insulated panels to grip Jake's bones as he battled weariness, knowing rest could prove lethal if weather turned. Still, the rover rolled onward through the night, tiny and transitory as the man within against contours that had shifted by geology's will since planets were born. As the sky paled with the approaching dawn, exhaustion threatened to overwhelm Jake's resolve. He steered the rover into a hollow between dunes Shuttered hatches blocking swaying sand from view. Silence pressed in, the utter stillness of the empty plain, unnerving after perpetual engine hum. No wildlife sounds or even wind disturbed the pre-dawn hush. Jake tried to rest, but doubts plagued him in the isolating quiet. What if failures outmatched his skills? If storms or malfunctions stranded him terminally lost, would the colony hold on without the seeds? His family's legacy depended on this mission, but his own judgment had put it at risk. Eventually, fatigue overcame misgivings enough for fitful sleep. Jake dreamed of ghostly figures traversing the desert as limitless as the stars. Their sand-scoured visages turned accusingly when he called, lost and flailing amid featureless dunes. Groggily waking as Phobos emerged gibbous and crimson, Jake shook off lingering unease. Checking systems revealed nothing amiss. For now, at least, fortune still favored their fragile endeavor. He started the engines, wheels biting firmly into sand once more as the rover departed at dawn's leading edge. As crimson gold light spilled across the rust plains, 
Jake boiled water for breakfast over an electric burner. Puffy clouds gathered along the eastern skyline as Saul rose, its radiance bathing the scene in warm hues. Jake watched dunies blaze scarlet and amber, stark shadows stretching like blunted fingers. Beyond lay mysteries and perils by the hour, with each kilometer distancing him further from rescue. This vast panorama had entombed hopes and dreams before, could he fare better against its tests? His thoughts turned to the colony, where they huddled in its shelter now, braving the day's first chill as he had done so many times. Their fate depended on what lay ahead, through weathering blizzards or suffocating calms. Finishing a simple meal, Jake stowed gear and started engines with renewed focus. The outpost beckoned somewhere over the molten miles. All he could do was push forward into mysteries, the new dawn unveiled. His family's legacy was a compass, as was the colony's survival. Nothing could divert him now from the road unfolding across the ruddy plains.